of the work of uh, ICRAF uh, in Peru is concentrated in the region of Ucayali. Ucayali is one of the five regions of the Amazon and it's very big, it's uh, 10 million hectares and uh, has a quite a long history of uh, human presence. Uh, the first inhabitants of the, of the region were the indigenous and uh, in around the 18th century, 17th century, sorry, the Spanish uh, missionaries started to explore the area and uh, since then uh, there has been a real a strategy of colonizing the Amazon and uh, through different steps and now the Amazon are fully part of the development, uh, economical development strategy of uh, Peru. So what we have are two big, let's say, groups of uh, population. We have the indigenous people and then we have the colonies. In, in, uh, in Ucayali, we can identify three main landscape mosaic. We have an area that is uh, intensively uh, cultivated, with, uh, which is around Pucallpa. Pucallpa is the capital of uh, the region. Uh, let's say that 50 years ago Pucallpa almost did not exist. It was a small settlement that stuck with the boom of uh, rubber furs, of pastures, and now oil, timber is, has really grown, attracting migrants from the Andes and from other regions of the, of the Amazon. Pucallpa was the first settlement of the Amazon that was connected with the capital of Peru in 1940, and that's what also made it very attractive for colonists. The second type of uh, landscape mosaic we, said, we have are the settlements that are found along the network road and along the river. But those along the river are the ones that are inhabited by the indigenous community. So you, we have these two groups, indigenous and mestizos colonies. Mestizos is like mixed population. There is not too much planting. The people who are planting actually are people from the private sector. So big companies that invest to offset their carbon footprint and that they buy hectares and hectares of land and they start reforestation project. We work at uh, multiple levels. Um, we work with uh, farmers organization. Uh, we on the designing of uh, uh, systems to promote trees planting, but not simply trees planting. It's really landscape management. What we want to promote is a combination of, uh, um, let's say, management of the landscape through the change of trajectories that uh, are leading to emission and also through the stabilization of positive trajectories that enhance carbon. So uh, the challenge for us is that first we, we, we have to understand really what are the trajectories of all these land use systems and to well understand who are the actors because these farmers are there but they don't see themselves to be there in the future. They hope that they will go to live in town, that they will... So we have to adjust to that vision they have that is relatively short term and, and be able to, to see something in, in, in the long term towards sustainability. So it's really, it's really a challenge. The other challenge is that most of the, for example, the, the standards that are designed for carbon do not fit with smallholders, with all the complexity that the smallholders create in the landscape. So you have very sort of uh, narrow, well-designed intervention that not necessarily can reflect what people actually do on the ground. So we are, we are trying to, to find a way to, okay, what, what are the best combination of schemes that we can consider? Uh, what are the best combination of land uses? For what type of farmer profile? So that's the local, very local level. It's important to work with the regional government because Peru has adopted a decentralization uh, law recently and, and, and the four regions are like getting more and more involved in and independent and autonomous in deciding what are 
uh, their strategies in terms of development, in terms of environment, in terms of climate change. So Peru is really supporting what they call a nested approach. So you have the national level that like emerges from regional level uh, policies and interventions. So that's why we target the regional level. And um, we coordinate the Red Roundtable in Ucayali and we support them in terms of uh, capacity building. We organize some training on LUVES and integrated land use planning, uh, training on how to analyze and understand uh, land cover maps and uh, how to uh, assess the value of the information that, uh, that you have in order to, to use that information for land use planning. And uh, we will be involved in the process of uh, uh, economical ecological zoning, that is the main input for the land use planning process. And we uh, also are increasingly involved in the regional sectorial roundtable, so the one on, uh, on the cattle pasture sector, on cacao and on oil palm. So, so we really try to well, get in touch with the and enter, intervene and have impact on the, at the different level.